board's all warped. I don't think I can do anything about it. Hamlin Towns in Brunswick by famous Hanover City. The river lesser deep and wide washes its wall on the southern side. A pleasanter spot you never spied, but when begins my ditty almost 500 years ago to see the townsfolk suffer so from a vermin was the city. Rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats and bit the babies in the cradle and ate the cheeses from the bats and licked the soup from the cups from the ladles. Put open the kegs of salted scraps they nest the men's Sunday hats, and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning out their speaking, their shrieking and squeaking in fifty different sharps and flats. At last the people in a body to the town hall came flocking. Tis clear, cried they, our mare is a naughty, and as for our corporation, shocking, 
I think we buy gallons lined with vermin for dolts who can't or won't determine what's best to rid us of our vermin. You hope because you're old and obese to find in the furry civic world's ease. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking to find the remedy we are lacking, or sure as fate will send you packing. At this miracle, operation quake with a mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council. At length, the mayor broke silence. For a gilder, I'd my ermine gown sell. I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack one's brain. I'm sure my forehead aches again. I scratch it so, but all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just as he said this, what should hap at the chamber door but a gentle tap? Bless us, cried the mayor, what's that? With the corporation as he sat, looking little through under his back. Nor brighter were his eyes, nor moister than two long opened oyster, save when I knew his paunch was for a plate of turtle green and glutinous. Only a scraping of shoes on a mat, anything like the sound of a rat leaf, so my heart will hit a path. Come in, cried the mayor, looking bigger, and then did come the strangest figure. His long clear coat from heel to head was half yellow and half red, and he himself was tall and thin, with sharp blue eyes, each like a pin, and light loose hair and swarthy skin, nor tuft of hair on cheek, nor beard on chin, but lips were smile went out and in. There was no guessing his gift. Uh, no, I don't, I don't speak, uh, un poco, a little bit, not much. Sorry. Sorry to mislead you with the title of my, uh, periscope. I speak a little bit, but not much. I can say hello, like how are you, como esta? I can say I like fish tacos. Uh, mi gusto comer tacos de pescado. That's all I can say. That's also the dirtiest thing I could say in uh, in Mexico uh, in uh, Spanish. So I was gonna say Mexican. Horrible. Uh, Me gusto comer tacos de pescado. Mi nombre es Esteban Tune. Um, no, it's a, uh, it's one. I, I'm, I'm a head. One of the head bakers here. I should say head baker. One of the senior bakers. Oh, my, my phone is slipping there. Sorry. Um. There's four stores here in Vancouver. Well, there's two in North Vancouver and two in Vancouver, and I bake at all the shops. So, uh, but I've worked with the company almost from the beginning. I'm not the owner, though. I'm just uh, I'm just one of the bakers. Maybe one day I'll own my own shop, though. Here's to dreams. Ah, uh, they're, uh, they're bagels. Montreal style bagels. This is a, this is a cooked bagel right here. Just took it out of the water, put the sesame seeds on them. And then uh, I'm putting them on, uh, these are mahogany planks. And I put the mahogany planks into the oven. And I put them off, I put the mahogany planks onto the deck, and then I, I um, put them in the center of the oven so they brown on one side. And then I brown them on the other side. And there you go, and I take them out of the oven. That's, that is the process. Making Montreal style bagels. Um, I don't know. I, I really like hot, hot. Uh, I like hot weather. I like sitting in the sauna. So I'm pretty. Uh, I'm I'm well conditioned for. It. Hot. 
for a hot environment, I guess. I don't know. I try to keep fit. I rode my bike to work this morning. It's a 40 minute bike ride to my house. It's all uphill. Like Cancun? Uh, no, Vancouver's not like Cancun. <laughs> Cancun's sunny most of the time. Vancouver rain, it rains here a lot. I apologize for my tripod. It, uh, it's malfunctioning here. I'll have to prop it up here in a moment when I have a chance to take my gloves off. It takes about 20 minutes to bake uh, from, pot, from pot to finish. It takes about 20 minutes. Um, but then there's there's all the dough making and all that. Sorry, I'm gonna just readjust this here. So. We have, um, we have a sandwich line, we make sandwiches, and we sell uh, half dozens and dozens. And uh, so we, we also make um, Montreal smoked meat sandwiches. We have a club, a turkey, a vegetarian. Um, and then usually you just get a bagel with, a, like, with cream cheese or a cream cheese bread or nut butter. We just have to get it butter, but for now. I'm working on getting more here. I'm a vegetarian, so uh, I'd like to see us have more options for, for vegetarians, myself. Nice, yeah. I love to see you here in Canada. It's a wonderful place. It's one of the few democracies in the world that will endure after <laughs> after President Trump is finished with our exploiting his Americans, American democracy, whatever. Nice. I love Mexico. I was just in Cancun uh, in January, and uh, I really enjoyed myself. Cancun's a wonderful city. Hopefully I'll be able to go back soon. I've also visited Puerto Vallarta, and uh, I went to Guadalajara for a day. That was a long time ago, though. I think, uh, I think it was it. That I went to part of Puerto Vallarta in 2006.
Cattle in towns in Brunswick, by famous Hanover City, the river western deep and wide washes the wall on the southern side, a pleasanter spot you never spy. But when begins my ditty, almost 500 years ago, to see the town who suffer so from vermin was a pity. Rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats and bit the babies in the cradle and ate the cheeses from the bats and licked the soup from the cooks or ladles, split open the keg and salted sprats, they nest in their Sunday hats, and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning out their speaking with shrieking and squeaking in fifty different sharps and flats. At last, the people in a body to the town hall came flocking. Tis clear, cried they, our mayor is a naughty, and as for our corporation, shocking, the people buy down the line with vermin, for dull to can't or won't determine what's best to rid us of our vermin. You hope because you're old and obese, find the furthest the world sees. Rouse up, sirs. Rouse up, sirs. Rouse up, sirs, and give your brains a racking. To find the remedy we are lacking, for sure as fate will send you passion. At this, the mayor and corporation quake in white consternation. An hour they sat in council. At length, the mayor bride broke silence. For our gilder, hide my ermine gown cell. I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack those brains. I'm sure my poor head aches again. I scratch it so but all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just the sentence, what should happen? Not the chamber door and a gentle tap. Bless us, cried the mayor, what's that? With the corporation as he sat, looking little to wonder his fat. Nor brighter were his eyes, nor moister, than a too long open oyster. Save when at noon his paunch grew mutinous, for plate of turtle green and glutinous. Only a scraping of shoes on a mat. Anything like the sound of a rat makes my heart go pit a pat. Come in, cried the mayor, looking bigger. And in did come the strangest figure. His long queer coat from heel to head was half yellow and half red. And he himself was tall and thin, with sharp blue eyes, each like a pin. And light loose hair and swarthy skin, nor tuft of hair on cheek nor beard on chin. While lips were smile and out and in, there is no guessing his kith or kin. And nobody could enough admire this tall man in his quaint attire. Quoth one, as as my great grandsire, starting up at the trunk of Doom's tone, had walked this way from his own stone. He bent towards the council table, and please, Your Honor, said he, I am able, by means of secret charm, to draw all the creatures living beneath the sun, the crawlers swim or fly or run, after me so as you never saw. And I chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm. The mole and toad and newt and viper, and people call me the Pie Piper. And here they notice round his neck a scarf of red and yellow stripe to match with his coat of self same check. And that scarf said and hung a pipe, and his fingers they notice were ever spraying, as if impatient to be playing upon this pipe as low it dangled over his vesture so old fangled. Yes, said he, Pie Piper as I am, in Tartari I fred the cam last June from his huge swarm. I eased in Asia the Nizam of a monstrous brood of vampire bats. And as for what your brain bewilders, if I rid your town of rats, will you give me one thousand guilders? One, fifty thousand was the exclamation of an astonished mayor and corporation. Into the street the piper stepped, smiling first a little smile, as if you on magic slept in his quiet pipe a while, like a musical adept. Blow his pipe, his lips he wrinkled, green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled, like a candle flame where his salt is sprinkled, and ere three shrill notes the pipe uttered, he heard as if an army muttered, and a muttering grew to a grumbling, and a grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling, and out of the houses came the rats tumbling, great rats, small rats, lean rat, brawny rat, brown rat, black rat, grey rats, tawny rats, gravel, potters, gay young sisters, fathers, mothers, uncles, cousins, cocking tails and pricking whiskers, Families by tens and dozens, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, followed the Pied Piper for their lives. From street to street he piped advancing, and step for step they followed dancing, until they came to the River Wesser, wherein all plunged and perished, save one who stout as Julius Caesar, swam across and lived to carry, as he the manuscript he cherished, to Ratland Homer's commentary, which was, at first shrill notes of the pipe, I heard a sound as of scraping tripe, and putting apples wondrous ripe, into the cider presses ripe, and it seemed as if a voice sweeter far than by heart or by salary and plead, called out, O oh, rat, rejoice, the world is grown to a vast dry saltery, so munch on, crunch on, take your lunch on, breakfast, supper, dinner, lunch on, and 
just a faulty sugar punch on, already stayed like a great sun shone. Gracious, scarce an inch before me, just as me thought it said come for me, I found the wester rolling over me. You should have heard the Hamlin people ring the bells till they rock the steeple. Go, kind man, get long poles, poke out your nest and block up the holes. Consult with carpenters and builders, and leave in our town not even a trace of the rats. But suddenly up the face of the Piper Perk in the market place, the first we feed, a thousand builders. A thousand builders, the mayor looked blue, so did the corporation too. For council dinners made rare havoc with their aid will sell, bin the grub off, and half the money would be punished. This seller's biggest butt of reddish, to pay this sum to a wandering fellow, a gypsy coat of red and yellow. Besides, quoth the mayor of the New England, our business was done at the river's brink. We saw her eyes of vermin sink, and what dead can't come to life, I think. So, friend, we're not folks to shrink from our duty of giving you something to drink, and a matter of money to put in your poke. But as for the gilders, what we spoke of them, as you well know, was in joke. Besides, their losses have made us thrifty. A thousand guilders, come take fifty. Piper's face fell and he cried, No trifling, I can't wait beside. I promise to visit by dinner time, Baghdad, and accept the prime of the head cook's potage, all he's rich in, for having left in the Caleb's kitchen of a nest of scorpions, no survivor. With him I prove no bargain driver. With you don't think I'll bait a stiver. And folks who put me in a passion may find me pipe after another fashion. How, cried the mayor, do you think I broke? Being worse treated than a cook, insulted by a rival, with idle pipe confession of rival. Threaten us, fellow, do your worst, blow your pipe there till you burst. Once more he stepped into the street, and to his lips again laid his long pipe to smooth straight cane. And here he blew three notes, such sweet, soft notes, as yet musician's cunning never gave me enraptured air. There was a rustling that seemed like the bustling, a very crowd justly, a pitching and hustling. Small feet were pattering, shoes clattering, little hands clapping, little tongues chattering, and like foals in the farmyard with barley is scattering, out came the children running, all the little boys and girls, with ropes and cheeks and flax and curls, and sparkling eyes and teeth like pearls, tripping and skipping ran merrily after, the wonderful music was shouting and laughter. The bear was dumb and the council stood, as if they were chained to the blocks of wood, unable to move a step or cry, to the children merrily skipping by. Could only follow with an eye the joyous crowd at the piper's back, and how the mare was on the rack, and the wretched council was in the feet as the piper turned from the high street to where the west had rolled its waters, right in the way of their sons and daughters. However, he turned from south to west, and to top of our hill and steps to dress, and after him the children pressed, great with the joy in every breast. He never could cross the mighty top, he's forced to let the piping drop, and we shall see our children stop. But lo, they reached the mountainside, a wondrous portal opened wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed. The piper advanced and the children followed, and when all were in to the very last, the door in the mountainside shut fast. Did I say all? No, one was lame, and could not dance the whole of the way. And in after years, if you would blame this sadness, he was used to say, It is dull in our town since my playmates left. I can't forget that I'm bereft of all the pleasant sights they see, which the piper also promised me. For he led us, he said, to a joyous land, joining the town in just at hand, where waters gushed and fruit trees grew, and flowers put forth a fairer hue, and everything was strange and new. The sparrow was bright and a peacock here, and their dogs that were on our fellow deer, and honeybees had lost their stings, and horses were born with eagles' wings, and just as I became assured, my lame folk we speedily cured, the music stopped and I stood still, and found myself outside the hill, and left behind against my will, to go now limping as before, and never hear of that country more. Alas, alas, for Hamelin, there came into many a burger's pate, a text which says that heaven's gate opes to the rich at as easy rate as the needle's eye takes a camel in. The mayor sent east, west, north, and south to offer the piper by word of mouth, wherever it was men's lot to find him, silver and gold to his heart's content, if only he'd return the way he went and bring the children behind him. But when they saw it was lost endeavor, the piper and dancers were gone forever, they made a decree that lawyers never should think their records dated duly, if after the day of the month and year, these words do not well appear. And so long after what happened here on the 22nd of July, 1376, and the better in memory to fix the place of the children's last retreat, they called it the Pied Piper Street, where anyone playing pipe or tabor was short for the to lose his labor, nor suffer the hospital rear cavern to shock its worth the street so solemn. And opposite the place of the cavern, they wrote the story on a column 
and on great church windows painted, the same to make the world acquainted how their children were stolen away, and there it stands this very day. And I must not omit to say that in Transylvania there is a tribe of alien people who ascribe the way and dress of which their neighbors lay such threats to their fathers and mothers having risen out of sub subterranean prison into which they were Japan a long time ago in a mighty band out of Hamlin towns in Brunswick and land. But how or why they don't understand. So, Willie, let me and you be wipers of scores out for all men, especially pipers. And whether they pipe us free from raptors or mice, if we promise them aught, let us keep our promise. I'm just saying somebody needs to make a movie based on that poem, just saying that. Just putting that out there into the world. It's a great poem. One of the greatest ever written in the English language. Good morning. Welcome to the stream. I'm baking Montreal style bagels. Montreal style bagels. Currently on my third batch. I got two in the oven and one in the pot. I just finished reciting Pied Piper Pamela by Robert Browning. That's how my morning's going. that like trolls trolls think they can just say that kind of like you'd never say that to somebody that you just met never you would never ever say that you know you just met me dude or gal <laughs> I'm assuming you're a dude though the worst kind of dude the worst Basement dwelling video. <laughs> we play a lot of video games and watch a lot of porn. One of those kind of guys. A Trump supporter. I'm pretty sure you already have germs, dude. I don't think you need mine. <laughs> what you want is you want Donald Trump's germs. Because you're in love with Donald Trump. You're a Donald Trump supporter.
This is a family show. Please, please keep your, your comments free of perversion. I'm trying to have a family show here, troll boy. Trollboy Trumpovich. You're one of the harbingers of the Trumpocalypse. The Trumpocalypse is coming. Not even a Trump Popovich. Not even a Trump Popovich. Twitter, Twitter would, would, would be one, turn out to be one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. There's, there's famine, war, what was the other one? And the, I, I don't even know, the, what are the four horsemen of the apocalypse? Trump has rolled them all, though. Trump loves, loves his horses. Trump is the equestrian of the end times. Oh.
morning, welcome to the stream. I'm baking Montreal style bagels. Montreal style bagels. I can't read your comment, it's too far away. Uh, sorry, I don't speak that language. I speak English. A little bit of Spanish, not much though, sorry. I'm making bagels. Montreal, Montreal style bagels. I'm putting, uh, I'm see putting seeds on the bagels and I'm putting them on mahogany boards and you can put them in the oven. They're on mahogany boards and they're in the oven. I'm about to take this batch out. The batch of 30 everything bagels. Fancy there, sorry. <laughs> there's a, there's an everything bagel. Hot out of the oven. I make, um, <laughs> on, a, um, on a weekend I make about 1,200 to 1,500 bagels in, in a 10 hour shift. And uh, on a regular, like weekday, I, I bake um, either like 900 to 1,100 bagels, depending on how busy it is. Today I'm going to bake about 1,000 bagels, maybe a little bit more. Fridays are one of our busy days. So many, um, it's, a, it's a busy shop. We, we, uh, it's a busy, like, it's on Lonsdale on the 17th in North Vancouver. It's a busy intersection here. So, we get a lot of business.
So I have, a, I have a batch of coffee in the oven, or a batch of coffee and a batch of multigrain. And uh, I just put um, 30 rosemary rock salt bagels into the oven, or into the pot, sorry. <coughs> And here's, this is my first batch. This is a uh, sesame. That's everything. Sorry, the light, the light's a little good. Oh, I love my job. I never dreamed I'd be doing something this, like this with my life. But uh, I'm glad that I found it. It's, uh, it's an amazing job, but it's, it's definitely not for everyone. It, um, I mean, you have to endure hot, uh, you know, a hot, you have to be in front of a hot oven for 10 hours, eight to 10 hours a day. I'm constantly moving. You gotta be fit, healthy, positive. Being positive helps a lot in a job like this. I'm generally a pretty positive person, I think. It's like, um, for, for I, I treat, I like, I think of it as sort of like an endurance sport. You know, like a low intensity endurance sport. That's what, this is what I, that, that's how I feel like this, what I'm doing right now, which is exactly, I, I've always been athletic. I've, uh, I was in biathlon when I was a teen, teenager. I, I cross country skied and, you know, shoot, you shoot or whatever. So uh, I've always, I've always been involved in those kind of things. So. My name tag's coming off. Sorry. Go straighten it out. So uh, my uh, my rosemary rock. So the batch I just put in the oven and, or in the pot is, is boiling. The, your, the, uh, the bagels are coming to the surface. I'm gonna flip these bagels off the, off the boards onto the deck.
it's hot here, I gotta open the window. Our, the front of our store opens up into like a patio and uh, helps keep this place cool when it's open. It's currently not open right now though. It's a, that's a cooked bagel, rosemary rock salt. We put rock salt on them now. I'm oh, sorry, I missed that one. I didn't, uh, didn't get a chance to read all of that, sorry. Too. I'm hungry too. I'm not gonna have a chance to eat for a while though. Gotta wait. So I have, uh, I currently have three batches in the oven. I've baked two. I'm gonna take Poppy out pretty soon here. That's everything. Poppy's almost ready. Drawing my hands out here. It's the most expensive hand dryer in the world. Yes, they are hot. Assuming that's what you're asking. The oven is very hot. 
Moi Caliente. Japanese? No, I'm not Japanese. These are Montreal style bagels, and I'm in Vancouver. Hello. I'm pretty sure a business like this would do very well in place like Tokyo. Oh, you're from Russia. Welcome from Russia. Is our coffee seed? Yeah, oh yeah, Vancouver is a Vancouver is a lovely city to live in and to visit. Tis a beauty. Tis a beauty. That's about all for our stream this morning. I'm going to shut it down soon. It is almost 10 past 6 here in North Vancouver on Lonsdale and 17th at Ros Rosemary Rock Salt. Oh, wow. Here, the sirens are gone. I'm going to show you the sirens. There's a there's a view of the city there. Oh no, it's an ambulance. I don't, um, ambulance. I don't think it was. Uh, might, it, it's not necessarily a fire. I don't know. As you can see, our start there's Starbucks across the street. Esso. Uh, there's a city market on the other on the other corner of the section. There's also. A, I'll, I'll give you a little tour here. There's a, there's a Sticky's Candy across the street. They sell candy, obviously. Yeah, it's spring here. It's uh, it's quite lovely. Look at the nice. Yeah, they yeah they uh they move fast when they're responding to an emergency. And there's uh this is our sandwich line. There's our sign that says hot Montreal smoked meat. And uh here's our here's our menu board if you want to see our menu. And uh. These are, those are our day olds down there. They're gonna be put out on a shelf soon. And in these, this is our display for the bagels. And then uh, that's my bicycle that I rode here this morning. And uh, yeah, that's it. I gotta get back to baking though. Have a great morning. See you soon.